So in a time where a lot of light has been shown on how a lot of women are being unfairly treated and marginalized, uh, in a time like this, someone seems to be very, very ready to be in the forefront to speak very openly about what she thinks about this and at the same time also show exactly how very aggressive she is for change. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today, radio personality, unapologetic feminist, please welcome to my bar, Awazi, the Awazi. What's up, lady? What's up, girl? I'm good, my G. Good to have you here. The Awazi, Awazi, how, how is it? Uh, is, it works. Whichever. Yeah? With or without the B. All right, man, it's good, it's good to have you here. Thank All right, you. looks like you've, uh, you've been doing a couple of interesting things lately. I have, and I'm just grateful for all the, you know. And also featured in a documentary, which we would be uh, talking about, obviously. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Let me oh, hook yes. you up with a drink, so uh, let's I make it happen. Like <laughs> Awazi is a popular radio host in Nigeria and a former Unilag student. Like many young women who study here, she says she was sexually harassed by a lecturer. My lecturer asked me out on a date. Yeah, and I was, what, 16? My experience was not as bad as Kiki's. Yeah. I was one of the lucky few, and lucky, I just mean like I was just the odd, the oddity in, you know, the norm. Okay. Be and I'm not even trying to say that to be in a, oh, I'm in a better standing position. I was just, it was just very lucky for okay. me to get out of what I was into. Like, so a lecturer of mine must have... There was a time we're all submitting, you know, trying to submit our yeah. test papers or whatever assignment, I believe. Yeah. And then I just got into uni. I, I was you were fresh, fresh, okay, fresh, fresh. 16. I was sixteen, and he literally saw me. I was one of the few that couldn't get my paper to him in time, so okay. I got it to him. There was now another class supposed to be going on, so he asked us to come outside, and you know, he, yeah, he, okay. he started to ask me how old I was. I told him I was sixteen. Then he made like lewd comments about my body, okay, and how I look so ripe for sixteen. <laughs> really? Yes. No, obviously, this made you feel uncomfortable. Huh? Hella uncomfortable. So as a feminist, as, a, as a, an unapologetic feminist, you'd realize um, a lot of people have learned from this by avoiding, to, uh, they, don't, like, they wouldn't exactly endorse such so that it doesn't affect their business or the way they are perceived since they're in the public eye. Now you're a radio personality, you know, you, uh, you're pretty famous for the show you were doing and also right now still, you're, you, a lot of people like to follow you because of the passion that you have. Yeah. So were you never worried at any point to say, oh, well, you know, maybe I should tone this down. Or did anybody try to hit you up to say, Awazi, look, you need to chill with this feminism uh, agenda because it's, yeah. it's a bit aggressive, even from maybe your workplace and so on. Yeah, I think, I think that there were occasions in my workplace uh -huh. that it came up. But okay. obviously, it was never, I, I didn't pay too much mind to it because this is who I am. Like, yeah. this is... Who I am to the core of my being. I've always been, even before I knew the meaning of the word a feminist, yeah. I was brought up like this. Like, so I, I wouldn't be able to tone it down even if I tried. Yeah. So yeah, there was that. It was a little bit of a challenge at the time that it came up because yeah. I didn't even know how to explain. I think I was talking about rape on the okay. radio yeah. at some point, and this is like a music radio station, but I took my little pockets of time yeah. to talk about it, and yeah, Somebody some said, people hey, weren't happy, we need to chill. but yeah, some people weren't happy about that, but I mean, I did what I did, and I kept it moving. The Awazi, mm. you also um, had that very interesting um, situation with WizKid where because. you were calling him your bestie and then oh all of a God. sudden people said you were, <laughs> you, you just, you yeah. And you, 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 your response I would say was nice, measured, but and also very obvious, you know, where your standpoint was. So yeah. take us through very quickly, yeah, what happened? I, okay, so when I was on the radio, I had this habit of like, for example, I'll say that, oh, Whiskey was my bestie. Yeah. He would always text me yeah. and tell me when records are dropping. I would say that, oh, Tua Savage, I'm like her son's auntie. I would just, I would just mess around, just, yeah. you know, yeah. for the fun of it. And I like that that would kind of give me interaction. So yeah. it just kind of built a relationship between me and certain artists and whatever. Yeah. So um, when Whiskey came in for yeah. an interview, yeah. obviously, I've been talking about this guy for months. I've been calling him my bestie and whatever. So. Yeah. 
I must have taken my phone and after the interview, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah my bestie, we're chilling. Just like Instagram or whatever. Yeah. Unfortunately for me, my biggest flaw, or I don't want to say, to call it my a biggest flaw. crime was yeah. having big, big boobs. Yeah. Because that's literally all it was. Like, I literally made that video and he called me his bestie back and I sent it to my family. And my parents were laughing. They were like, ah, finally he's answered you and blah, blah, blah. Like, he's called you his bestie. Yeah. And everything was just fine up until some unfortunate blogger decided to post it up and say that I was rubbing my breasts on Whiskey, which was not the case. Like, it was literally just because of the angle. I couldn't even feel Whiskey's body on mine and I didn't yeah. even want that. Yeah. Like, I... It was just really annoying. So then mm. that just opened to, it opened a floodgate of body shaming. Everybody was talking about my, and I wouldn't even say body shaming. Like it, it opened like slut shaming too, because people were saying I was trying to that be this was your intention. baby mama. Mm.